Under the camera menu, you have four sub-menus. You have your basic setting, your video adjust, your motion, and your video loss. Okay, first is your basic setting menu. Under the basic setting menu, you can go ahead and choose which particular camera you would like to work with. Once you choose your camera you would like to work with, you go ahead and put in your camera title. You can have up to 12 characters in the title. Okay, you have your install button. If you uncheck the install button, you'll notice everything grays out. Okay, If you're not using all four or all eight cameras, it is highly recommended that you uninstall that particular camera so there is no properties giving to that camera and it's not recording on a blank screen. If you do leave the camera uninstalled and there is no camera in that particular input, it will go ahead and record at the event speed or the normal speed. Um, and basically it will be recording a blank space. So that's just going to be eating away at the hard drive space, which is not necessary. So always make sure that there, if there is no camera input being used to uninstall it. Underneath there you have your record mode. You have event and continuous. Okay, event means basically recording on an event only, whether it be a motion or an alarm action. And continuous, you have the two options between continuous, okay? Continuous could mean 24-7 recording, or if you choose a record mode, continuous, and then you enable the motion, that's saying that you would like it to record at a slower speed rate when there is no motion event, and then jump up to the event speed rate when there is an event, okay? Again, that's only when record mode is continuous and the motion is enabled. If the record mode is continuous and the motion is disabled, that is saying the normal speed only and it will record for 24-7. You do have the option of choosing covert. Covert will make the camera appear a uh, blue box as if there is no camera input there. Okay. Um, again, that's just for covert applications there. You do have, you get to choose the record quality for each in particular camera. Okay, you have your five different qualities, low, basic, standard, high, and superior. Again, you can choose the record quality for each particular camera. And then below there, you have your normal speed and your event speed. Depending on the record mode, you would go ahead and choose your normal and event speeds here below. And in this particular channel, if you were using a PTZ, this is where you would choose the PTZ ID down here below. Next is your video adjust screen. Under the video adjust screen, it's basically you can toggle between cameras one through four. It's going to automatically display the title of the camera that you titled it. And then you could play around with the brightness, the contrast, and the color of that particular camera. Under your motion menu, you would choose the particular camera you would like to work with. Okay, once choosing the camera, you will display the title of that particular camera that you have set up. Defaultly, it is disabled, so everything will be grayed out, and you cannot click into any of the options, as you can see. Once it is enabled, everything will highlight. You have the option of keeping a log. Okay, so will the DVR will keep a log of any motion events for this particular camera. So when doing an event search for motion, it can pull up any log for the motion on that particular camera. If you are using an alarm contact for the motion, you can choose the alarm output type here, none or one. And then your, alarm, your output type, you have the two different types, a timeout or your permanent. And then the timeout duration is below there. Okay, I would personally recommend keeping it between five to 10 seconds. So if the alarm or the motion is triggered and somebody walks in and out of the room with less than five to 10 seconds, it's only gonna record up to 10 seconds. Okay, anything you set longer time period, if someone does walk in and out and trips the alarm or the motion trigger, it will continuously record on the high frame rate while nobody's in that room. Okay, you do also have the options of buzzer or an email notification. By checking those, a buzzer would sound each time there is an, a motion event. And also, if an email notify is checked, anytime there is a motion event for this particular camera, there will be, will be an email sent to your email. You have your sensitivity, okay, one being your highest and 10 being your lowest. Default out of the box, it is five. So you can play around with the motion sensitivity for the particular camera you're setting up. And then you are able to set the grid. Okay, by setting the grid, it is basically saying which areas you would like to mask out. Let's choose just for instance here, say camera.
Okay. Let's say camera four. Let's say up top we did not want this area to be affected. So anytime somebody would put a cursor up there on the menu screen, it would you would be masking out this particular area. So anytime there'd be a motion event in this area, it would not trigger the motion and record. Okay, so by the set grid, you are able to mask out certain areas on that particular image. Then below that, you have your main monitor. You have two options of no change in full screen. If you were to cho choose full screen, anytime there was a motion on camera four, it would jump to full screen on your main monitor, and then once, once the motion is done, it would dr drop back down to your quadrant screen. Okay, if you left it on no change, nothing would happen to the main monitor anytime there's a motion. Okay, and then you have your video loss. Again, with your video loss, you would choose a particular camera you would like to work with. It's going to display the camera title underneath. Default out of the box, it is enabled. If you'd like to disable it, you can go ahead by so choosing that, checking, unchecking that box. Okay, there is the log option. So if you do search by video loss, there is a log kept of any time there is a video loss for that channel. If you are using an alarm contact, you can choose your output and the output type below here along with the timeout seconds. And then again, you also have the options of having a buzzer and email notification sent to you anytime there's a video loss on that particular camera.